Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and welcome to show and tell number 155. So we are back on a normal schedule now. Vlogmas in July is over. The disaster that that ended up being, or at least apparent disaster from what I had planned versus what actually happened. Well, my hair is all sorts of lopsided and doing weird things. Um... I hope you guys enjoyed what I did get done over the course of the time and where we did end up going. Y'all went to the dentist with me. That was so exciting, let me tell you. You did get to meet some of the doggos, though, so that was at least a little bit more exciting, but none of the planned trips or anything. Uh, as I told you guys in the final video, Troy was having surgery on his knee. That happened on Tuesday. I am filming today, Thursday. This should go up tonight. Um, was this, like, Thursday the 4th? Um, so he had a surgery on the second and it was, uh, the surgery was successful and everything. The surgeon says, you know, we've postponed having to have a total knee replacement for another 15 years and all that's great and stuff. But, uh, it was a fairly serious meniscus tear. He had to have some cleanup work done. There were some partially torn, uh, tendons and ligaments that also had to be repaired. So he's very stiff and very uncomfortable, but it's those, um, it's the little things that really are driving him crazy right now. He's not in any extra pain. So like he's not, you know, like dope to the gills or something where I have to babysit him. But they have it very tightly, um, a very tight compression bandage on it to reduce swelling for the first three days. And like that's driving him insane. He wants to like rip it off and start flexing things. But that's not the right thing to do yet. So, uh, but he's doing great. He's doing fantastic. So it's just, uh going to be a little bit of a process. He's going to try, I think, to go back into the office on Monday, which I think is a mistake, but what do I know? <laughs> anyway, so I do have some things in my whip basket. Saturday, I will be uploading a video that is my um, subscription boxes for this month. I do want to get an opinion, and I'm going to ask again on Saturday's video as well. What do you guys think of these three colors together in a project? I personally like them. I will probably also be posting on my Instagram to see what you guys think too over there. But I kind of dig this um, and I like the way the yellow kind of trans or yeah, the yellow transitions into the green and it's very similar to the yellow that's down here. Um, but this is my latest yarnable from last month, um, not including the one I'm going to unbox for Saturday's video, but this is Picnic Basket. This is Apple Crisp from September or October 2021, and this is Avocardio, which was, I think, March of 2022. And I really dig the three of these together. I showed them as an example of how to pair. If you do single skein subscription boxes, sometimes you need to pair things up a little bit, but I mean, guys comment down below. Also, um, another just quick housekeeping -y kind of thing here. Uh, I am noticing on my personal account that I am not seeing accounts that I'm subscribed to. I'm not unsubscribed this time, but if the channel is not one of the mega channels, I'm not seeing them. Like if a channel is under 50,000 subscribers. I'm not seeing their content as it's being uploaded. I have to go to the subscriptions or I have to go search that channel specifically. So if you're not seeing certain channels you've been looking for, or there's somebody you haven't seen in your feed recently and you're like, oh yeah, I wonder what happened to them. Did they stop uploading? Go check out their channel directly or check out your subscription list uh, regularly just to see really all the content that's out there. Because it's a... Uh, like I said, you know, on my personal account, it's extremely frustrating because I can't get certain things to populate. But like the other day, I, I watched a video that had to do with Family Guy. And then all of a sudden, my entire feed is nothing but Family Guy stuff. Um, watch one video and it's all Family Guy stuff. Watch one true history thing and I can't get that to populate. I have to search for the channels over and over again. And if I know it's a channel that uploads regularly, like uh, Reading the Past, I'll never see Dr. Cat's videos pop up on my, my primary list. So 
it's really weird. I haven't figured out what they've done to tweak the algorithm to where I'm not seeing things again, but it's happening here on this channel too, where, and it, because with the exception of like Secret Yarnery and um, like Crystal with Bag of Day, I'm not really subscribed to a lot of mega crafting channels. Well, I guess May May made it. Like that's a fairly large channel, but I'm not really subscribed to a lot of big channels for our community and I'm noticing like it's that 50,000 break and I'm getting non-craft themed things on here now I'm getting political things on here I'm getting um social things showing up so like it's it's overriding the content I'm subscribed to and the type of content I'm subscribed to so just Heads up if you're having some problems seeing some of the people you're subscribed to um, also at summertime. So if somebody did have a, like, they took a week off, you probably didn't see their videos when they came back. So just heads up. I don't know. My face is really itchy for some reason. I feel like I walked through a spider web, but I didn't. It's really weird. Anyway, on to the stuff in here. On to the stuff in here. The actual reason why you guys sometimes come by and say hello. <laughs> ah, good gracious. It's like, do I have a hair stuck to me? I don't know what's going on. Of course, I've got makeup on when this starts. So like, ah, it feels like I've got something that's going like here. And it's making my whole face tickle. Anyway. So I did not finish my fourth stuffy that I shared with you guys in the last vlogmas. Casper the snowman is still only halfway done. He has a head and he has like half a body. And I got Amigurumi burnout. But I got two out of three done. So I'm really pleased with that. Oh, we're going to have a pause in the middle of all this. It'll be fine. Anyway. See if I can do this without like totally making y'all seasick and knocking something over. So we have some granny squares because obviously I was stuck sitting in a waiting room and I've been in the car a lot and they're easy to work on. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, <laughs> nine, <laughs> well, we made it around 10. We have 10 granny squares for the last two weeks. Um, I will try to remember to go take a picture of my bass or what well, it's all now in one bag, one bag. But I'll take a picture of what I have left to work with that is in my leftovers partials group that I know I have. I'm sure now that I feel like I'm almost done, I can see an end in sight. I'm sure I will find a whole nother basket full of these things. And I'm going to be furious and livid and want to say some very unchristian words. That's just the way it rolls. It's just the way it seems to go here. Uh, well, I'm set that there for now. All these have to go back upstairs. Um, as I finish projects, though, I will be making these until I start putting them together. And I still think I'm going to try to do that in October and November. Do like one group in October and one group in November. We'll see how that works out. But we have one, two, three. Well, those don't look very different. <laughs> three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and another round 10 on the C to C. I did not do that on purpose. So we have 20 squares. That's like 10 squares a week, which not mad about. Not mad about that at all. I really want to get through with these leftovers. I do still have the DK weight like the leftovers. Once again, as I've said before, these are a size I hook, worst of weight scraps, worst of weight acrylic scraps. 
and it's a 10 row corner to corner and a 10 round grading square. But if you're thinking about doing the same kind of project, it really doesn't matter whatever size works for you. I literally just went until I got bored increasing and then decreased or ended the square. So there was no like measurement or planning or thinking involved. It was just do it. Um, it's it's kind of how I roll with a lot of these projects. So um, acquisition, I did get one of these. I am going to play with it some and do a review. I'm going to tell you now, this is the boy four in one crochet hook. I got the one that's D, F, H, and J sized. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I am 99.9% .9 sure I'm going to say this is crap for using as a crochet hook. I've had one of these before, way back when in the day, and it was smaller. It had like the doily size hooks on it and then like one standard. So it may have been like three doilies and a D or something. Um, a, the handle was uncomfortable. This Swiss Army knife style thing, it was just uncomfortable to hold. You have to kind of hold it like this because this way you're, if you, if you hold it like a pencil, you're going to be digging into the side of your finger with this lip right here. And it, that, that's just not, and you can't really choke up on it and, and, and come down here because then you have all this weight back here and that's going to put stress on your wrist. Um, so you kind of, and like I said, you know, I've got that weird half pencil, half knife grip thing. So it, it was very unwieldy. The weight is not very evenly distributed. These are always kind of as far as durability. Um, the hook heads, obviously you're fine. A boy hook is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with a boy hook. But uh, they're just not comfortable for crocheting. And this is kind of billed as, I mean, if you look at the picture even on the packaging, it's meant to be crocheted with. And I, I'm just, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to try it out. I will do some tests watching. I will try to f find a way to sit down and film my hands working with it and go into more detail. But what my original one, which I lost many years ago, was good at was keeping in my knitting bag, specifically if I dropped a stitch or if I needed to drop a stitch and fix it. It was good for that. So... But I did get this. I wanted to give it a shot. I've seen a couple of other people talking about these and wanting to test them. So, but, and I did have somebody specifically ask me if I'd be willing to review it. I'll give it a fair shot, but like I told them, don't hold your breath on this being great. For crocheting. Now, these types of tools do have other purposes, and we'll discuss more of that in that video, but that's more to come. I did actually bring down a whip to share with you guys. I am working on another diamond shawlette. I will try to leave that linked in the description box down below. But I am on the third row. And this is the same Charlotte I did with one of my Avery Lane subscription boxes. And ironically enough, I am using my Avery Lane skein coat in this one. This is from Precious Knit Shop. I shared that in my last haul video that I had purchased some more skein coats from her. But this is the original one I got. The yarn is Lion Brand Heaven or Haven. I don't have a tag down here to know which one it is. I just know it's one or the other. This is 100% nylon yarn. I have three skeins of it. They're all kicked up. Ready to go. Obviously, since I don't have my tags, though, I can't even tell you what color these are. Actually, do I have an extra? I don't have an extra of this color, but I could at least give you some stats. Now... They're somewhere in one of the other ones, which I'm not going to go moving things all over my room to share. But that is my, like, 
for cereal project right now. I'm still giving the amigurumi a break. But like I said, I will pick it back up. I will get Casper finished before Christmas. I just... Weird card noises. Anyway. That is all I had to share with you guys today. Very short and sweet. Kept it under 20 minutes. We're doing really good. Hopefully I won't wax on too poetic about what I have to share in my show and tell for, or my, my subscription box unboxings for the month of, yes, one is a, one comes at the beginning of the month, one comes at the end of the month. So I actually get them within days of each other. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, oh no, I have one more thing to show you guys. Oh. We're going to go over 20 minutes. I'm sorry. Hold on one second while I move this out of the way and go get the other stuff. Okay, so cards. I did get a bunch more cards done. Uh, one group is like 33 and one group 66. But um, I did use an entire 6 by 6 paper pad. It was like Cozy or Let It Snow or something by Echo Park. More information during my vlog Vlogmas videos. I shared a lot more, but we've got a bunch in this sketch design. This is a Just Craft sketch, I believe. Let's see. Thumb through to the next sketch. Or one I think is particularly pretty. This is a Call Me Crafty Owl sketch from her uh, sheet load of cards. I think this is just crafts and that's a little gold Merry Christmas down there on that greetings border down there and I did some with different variations oops that one goes here uh, it's the same sketch a slightly different sketch oh that's the messed up one let's look at the one I didn't mess mess up So I did a couple in that sketch design. I got duplicates of those. I got a couple of these in this sketch design. I think there are four like that in the white ones and then four in the darker colors. But that used up one whole six by six paper pad. And then if you had tuned in to the original videos on Vlogmas, I had pulled out three pads to use, and I had already shared with you guys the Martha Stewart pad. This is the Echo Park pad. And then we went off script. In a basket over here behind my desk, I have had a group of scraps from previous years, um, and I'm actually on my second group of scraps now, but I decided to use those to make some cards. So we have some truly scrappy, scrappy cards. And this is the Echo Park scraps is along with the Rustic Christmas paper pad I used a couple years ago. Um, and then a whole bunch of ephemera and die cuts and things like that that have been hanging out in my stash. I used a lot of the Santa Clauses. I think the package I opened had 25 of them in there. And I used all 25 plus one from a different type of paper pad. Same thing with the uh, felt Christmas trees. But the ones with the squares are all a Just Crafts sketch. And we have some using this one. I think this was a Call Me Crafty Owl sketch. And there's just variations on the theme once again. Certain groups in the way I have this laid out were easier to just pull out as a whole group but this is just how I have them stored as they came off off from my thing actually this goes this way but some of these are like truly truly scrappy some of these were a little bit more planned I have a couple more with the strip scraps there Ooh, and I just felt that table wiggle. I got a couple that were designed like that. But 
that's back to the square scrap. So yeah, like, like I said, we got quite a few of this Christmas tree ones. So I got, like I said, I think there's like 33 of the Echo Park and like 60 or 66 or something of the scrap cards so far. I've got my second set of scrap cards that I am working on now. They're, I say scrap cards because it's scraps for leftover from what I did a couple years ago, but like there were like 12 full sheets of paper or almost full sheets of paper when I opened that packet up. So, but I store those in those uh, envelopes that I shared with you guys at the beginning of the year about paper spots, blah, 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 blah. Paper crafting supplies that I particularly use all the time and feel like are great things to have as you get started. So anyway, now we're truly done with everything and we're right at 20 minutes. So I don't want to hold you guys too long. I love you guys and I will see you guys real soon. Bye guys.